All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Revival Baptist Church. It is good to see everybody here this evening. If you would, please stand. We'll get started at this time by opening in a word of prayer. Brother Jacob, it is good to see you this evening. If you would, please open us in prayer. Amen. All right, if you can grab your songbooks and turn to song number 143. Song number 143, we're going to sing Blessed Assurance. Song number 143. <laughs> turn over to song number 207. Song number 207, we're going to sing Only a Sinner. Song number 207. <laughs> Save my grace. This is my glory to God be the glory. 
And at this time, you may be seated. Amen. Great singing this evening. At this time, we'll go over the announcements. Uh, we have some things we're still looking forward to this week and uh, some up, an upcoming event we want to pay attention to. Uh, tonight, uh, after service, we'll have our fam Family Favorites Fellowship. Uh, so it's uh, bring your favorite ice cream toppings. So we'll enjoy some ice cream and some fellowship after the service this evening. And then tomorrow, we have our midweek service in Jacksonville. We'll be in Ecclesiastes chapter number four tomorrow night. So looking forward to the preaching uh, there in Jacksonville. And then on Saturday, we have a soul winning and a church fellowship. And this will be at uh, Brother Peter and Sister Brittany Boyle's house. So we appreciate them and opening up their house for us to have that fellowship and that soul winning in Sebring. So uh, if you need some directions or information, just see Brother Peter about that. And we're looking forward to that this upcoming Saturday. And then also a birthday this Saturday. Brother Bill and his wife Kim have the same uh, birthday. So uh, we want to wish both of them a happy birthday this Saturday. And then on Sunday, two birthdays as well. Sister Jennifer Metaliano having a birthday uh, this Sunday. So don't forget. Okay, Brother Mark. <laughs> and then also it'll be Pastor Boyle's birthday uh, this Sunday as well. So wishing everybody a happy birthday. And then just a reminder that we do have sign language class this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for anybody interested in that. Now, uh, on, uh, Brother David had let me know uh, earlier today that uh, on August 2nd, there's going to be a deaf conference in Winter Springs. So for anybody that would like to be a part of that and support that ministry there, uh, you can see Brother David for more details on that. But again, that'll be August 2nd. And he did also let me know that the, uh, the conference that they had earlier this week went well. Also, we praise God for that. And moving on to our praise report. Uh, of course, we, how could we uh, uh, forget about our Puerto Rico missions trip uh, as we have uh, come back from that and 104 salvations on the island of Puerto Rico last week. Praise God for that. Uh, and then also we have 11 salvations on the board from Sunday. So praise the Lord. What a wonderful week for soul winning and preaching the gospel, seeing a lot of people get saved. And uh, surely, uh, as a church, uh, you couldn't help but just, just feel the unification over such a, uh, an effort, a church-wide effort, and what great success and a great victory that God hath wrought uh, through this church and the effort that went through and the prayers that were prayed, and we praise God for that. Uh, certainly looking forward to uh, getting back there sometime in the future. And, uh, and just seeing what the Lord continue, will continue to do there. Uh, but what a blessing. And then also to see and relive it through some of the, the, uh, the footage that's been put out. And the preaching was great. So looking forward to that. I know we have a lot of footage. So hopefully we can get some of that put together and have some kind of a documentary on that. But that, what, a, what a great week. And we praise God for it. And then also uh, the news, the McWilliams are having a baby boy. Uh, so that's exciting. And uh, we, we thank Sister Jackie for uh, putting together the surprise cupcakes. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but we rejoice with the McWilliams on that news there. Praise God for it. And moving into the prayer list, we still have on the prayer list for health, uh, Sister Kim Diaz uh, has not been doing well lately. So we want to continue to pray for her. And then also I speak, uh, speaking with Brother Mark uh, just earlier, uh, that Sister Jennifer has been feeling much better. Uh, so we'll take her off of the prayer list for health, but add her to the praise report as God has answered those prayers. And she is feeling much better. So praise the Lord for that. And that's great news there. And then also the Millers, I see them here with us tonight. Uh, and we want to just remember Sister Heather and that her brother had passed away last Saturday. So that's never an easy situation. Uh, so I want to keep the Miller family in our prayers there as they, as they uh, deal with that situation there and uh, her family as well. Uh, so we pray for them. And then also, Pastor, not with us this evening. He's out sick with the flu uh, as it's kind of been going around again, you know, and, and again and again and again. But we uh, want to pray for him because uh, he's been pretty sick since Monday. Uh, so that's, um, that's rough. So I want to pay, uh, uh, pray for Pastor as he is not feeling well. Then don't forget about our expectant mother, Sister Danielle Obenauer, and of course, uh, Sister Amanda, both expecting. Don't forget about them in your prayers. And then if you, uh, if you still haven't signed up, please do uh, for the, the church newsletter. And you can do that by sending the email 
and to Revival Baptist Newsletter at gmail.com. A lot of good information on there, and then a full breakdown of the prayer list and praise report. So that's all I have for the announcements this evening. Uh, at this time, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Brother Garrett, if you would, please open us in prayer. Any of the men in the church that would like to continue that prayer, and then I'll close. Brother Garrett. Our dear Heavenly Fathers, we continue in prayer tonight, Lord. Uh, I just pray that we would direct all the glory and the honor, the praise to you, Lord, that uh, all the things that we've been experiencing lately and, and all the miracles that we've seen, Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them, Lord. I pray that we would continue in your strength, Lord, and that uh, we would just uh, continue to fight and, 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 and stand for the truth, Lord, as a church. and. I'm so thankful for the church that, that we have here, Lord, and that we, we pray one for another, Lord, and we, we lift each other up, Lord, when needed. And uh, it's such a, such a blessing to have uh, such a group of people that, that care about each other, Lord, and that care about serving you. And, and Lord, it's such a blessing. And I think about the, the Miller family this evening, Lord, and, and uh, the passing of Sister Heather's brother, Lord. I pray that you give them strength, and, and Lord, that... Uh, that they would seek you in, in this time uh, of, of mourning, Lord, and uh, I pray for their family uh, as they remember their brother, Lord, and, and Lord, I just thank you for all, all the many uh, things that we see that you do for us, Lord, and, and, and I know that you, you care for us and that you provide for us, Lord, and, and we're just so thankful for that, Lord. I pray that our meeting tonight uh, would not be in vain, Lord, that you'd be here with us, and that the preaching of your word would be edifying to us, Lord. We thank you, and we love you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you would, please stand. We'll go ahead and grab your, uh, your song books and turn to song number 281. We'll sing song number 281. All right, song number 281. We're going to sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, song 281.
Uh, what a great message and song, great singing this evening. If you would, please take your Bibles and turn to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10. Uh, Brother Dale's going to come and he's going to relieve me of my duty this evening. He's going to read for us the entire chapter and then we'll have, have a word of prayer and then Brother Greg will come and bring the message this evening. John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10, the Bible reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to kill, for steal, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold, and one shepherd." Therefore doth my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. There was a division, therefore, among, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not. Because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many restored unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him. Brother DuPaul, could you pray for us, please?
Amen. Well, in John chapter number 10, there are a lot of places I'd love to stop and park because it's an incredible chapter. But where we're going we're gonna to look at our verse from, our text is going to come from chapter 10, verse number 10, the first part. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the title of the message tonight is Bait and Switch. Bait and Switch. So, you know, recently I've seen some things uh, in, in churches and different things that have, have me concerned about the youth in churches, have me concerned about uh, how the devil can just take them away or sweep them away. And I love the youth of our church, and I don't want to see even one of them lost to the devil or taken away by the devil. So tonight's message is going to be coming from that heart. And it might get a little crazy, but it's out of love, and I, I hope you'll receive it. So, <clears throat> I want to talk about fishing for just a minute. So, it starts off really nice, right? How many of you guys like to fish? A few of you. How many of you guys are good at fishing? All the same people that said they like to fish, right? So, you know, the purpose of fishing is to catch fish. And when you go fishing... You know, there, there is a guy on YouTube who just took a block of wood and put hooks on it and caught a bunch of fish with just a block of wood. But if you want to go fishing, you want to have bait that is as close to real. You know, they say match the hatch. You know, you want to have something that's as close to real, something that's going to lure in a bite, something that's going to deceive the, the fish into biting. I mean, that's the thing. And then, you know, you want something that may be flashy, maybe rattly, it makes noise, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to attract attention and hopefully catch a fish. And that's what I do. I just catch fish every once in a while. Only when my wife goes with me, so it proves that I catch them all the time because she's a witness. But what I want to talk about is there's a particular fish that I want to use as an illustration, as our example of this idea of bait and switch, and it's going to, you know, basically be a metaphor for the devil. So, has anybody ever heard of an anglerfish? Anybody ever hear of an anglerfish? An anglerfish is a fish that dwells in the depths of the ocean, very, very far down, and where there's no light, no light of the sun can penetrate to the depths that this fish dwells at. It's completely dark. Um, but this fish is unique in, in a few different ways. And I brought a, a picture to show you what this fish looks like, just in case you don't know. Um, earlier in the creation class, if you were like born like back when Pluto was a planet, then you're old like me. And this is going to look like a high-resolution picture, because it would have been back then. But this is the best I could do. But this is, this is an anglerfish. You notice the size of, of his mouth, but up here... He has this little aperture that's hanging off the top of his head. And at the end of that little rod, it's his little fishing rod, there's a little tiny light. It's a bioluminescent little tiny spherical uh, spot on the end of that little fishing rod. And what he does is he dwells in the darkness, remaining basically motionless. And in order to get prey items to come towards him, He'll turn that little light on, and he'll move it right down in front of his mouth, and he'll move it around, and some unsuspecting fish will look at it and go, I, I mean, there shouldn't be a little light like that down here, but that looks really cool, and I think I'm going to go try and eat it. Fish are not too smart. So it swims in, and that anglerfish just dangles that little bait right there. And when, when this, this other prey item is moving in, it thinks it's fixing to get a meal. It thinks it's fixing to grab onto something, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to quench that appetite that it had. And as it moves closer and swims closer, and it's checking things out, and it sees that little light, it gets closer, and wham! The anglerfish eats, not the prey item. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. We have an enemy in the world today. He's an enemy that seems to be 
gaining ground by leaps and bounds. He's an enemy that be, has become a friend to the Christian. He's an enemy that's been brought in by television, music, clothing, and just the, the, the culture in which we live. John 8, says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You see, the devil is a liar, and he'll deceive you in any way possible. And primarily, young people, this message is for you. You're shielded from the world, from the devil, to the best of the ability of your parents. And that's a great thing. But the devil is looking for a crack. So there's three points I want to make. One, the anglerfish dwells in the darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3, the Bible says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The primary goal of the devil today and since the beginning of time was to stop people from getting saved. That's his primary objective. He does not want you saved. So those people that are in this room that are too young to understand salvation, as you approach that time when you begin to understand and learn things, the devil does not want you to get saved. If he can keep you from getting saved, he can keep you going to hell. And that's what he wants to do. He comes to steal. If he can steal the opportunity for you to be saved, he will. You know, the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter number 13 that there's the seed that's planted and some falls by the wayside. And Pastor talked about that. And there's some that's going to fall. And you know what? The birds of the air are going to come. They're going to pluck it out. The devil will steal the word from you. The devil hates you. He's not your friend. John 3.19, the Bible says, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You know, the devil wants people in darkness, okay? He does not want you to dwell in the light. And here's the thing. Those wicked people that are in this world, they hate the light. They love the darkness. They love the cover of darkness, the concealment of darkness. They love the allure of darkness. They just plain love the darkness. Proverbs 2.12 says this, To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. Look, in the world we live in, there are dark people. The Bible says here that they, the evil man speaketh froward things. Now that word froward is a pretty inter interesting word. So you've heard of the word toward. This is the opposite. That's froward. So toward, the prefix is to. It means to go into the direction of something. Fro is the prefix for froward, which means to go away from something. So the word froward is literally someone who's going away from God, who's turned away and his heart is away from God. So the Bible says this man speaketh froward things. There are people in this world that speak the things of the exact opposite of God. And they're all over the place. You know, I, I don't recommend you ever turn a television on and watch what the world's garbage is. But if you do, I promise you those froward people will be there. And it's not just for the, the, the shows that come on at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. It's Saturday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. If you sit your kids down in front of that wicked box, it's going to tell your kids some froward things. It's going to help them to learn some things they shouldn't know. It's going to help them to, to acquire a vocabulary that's filthy and disgusting. And if you heard them say it, you'd probably put soap in their mouth. The forward things of this world are there to tingle the ears of the young people. Those, those things that the children will latch onto and will embrace because they're cool or they're edgy. The Bible goes on and says, Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. That's a pretty scary thought. So it says they leave the paths of uprightness. In order to leave the path of uprightness, 
they had to have been in the paths of uprightness. You know, there are a lot of wicked, filthy, evil people that come out of churches. <gasps> what? Yeah. I'm telling you, they, there are people that come out of churches that are just horrible people. And they, they hate the things of God. They hate the people of God. And they want to draw you away from the things of God. It says they walk in the ways of darkness. And, and here's something that sounds crazy to the normal person. But it says, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. So that's today's pop culture. That's today's rap culture. They rejoice to do evil. You know, there is music out there right now that glorifies filth, wickedness, sin, murder, drugs, alcohol, drunkenness, just plain filth. There's music out there that promotes that and people love it and they think it's so cool and they think it's so awesome and they just want to shove it down your throat and make you accept it and make you like it too. And you know what? The world wants you to think it's cool and they want you to be enticed into doing those things because I want to be one of the cool kids too. Whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Look, they ain't walking the straight and narrow. And it used to be, when you saw this verse, when I was a kid, whose ways are crooked, you just thought, man, they're walking the wrong way. But in the, in the, the day that we live in, when they walk in crooked, they walk in like a fag. They're not straight, is what I mean. They're sodomites. They're homos. They've got issues. They've got problems that there is no cure for, except what the Bible says, to stone them with stones. And I never dreamed in a million years when I was a kid that that would ever be a draw for anybody. But in the, in the weird, crazy, sick world that we live in, the darkness that's around us, there's such a draw. And you say, that could never happen in churches. I'm telling you it happens in churches. There are kids, there are pastor sons that look like complete homos, that act like effeminate little queers. And, and people just gloss over it like, oh, you know, well, no, no big deal. It is a big deal. The world is pressuring people to look like that, to act like that, to prance around and walk like that. But that's not of God, that is of the devil. It's wicked. If you find yourself being attracted or emulating those kind of people, go to your dad and say, Dad, I'm starting to act like a weirdo. Could you spank my butt? And Dad, if you need to do that, your son needs to come to you, you need to pay better attention. Put the phone down and look at your son and make sure everything's all right. Because you know what? The devil wants to take him. Every one of them. Whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.19, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So they're in darkness. They want to pull you into the darkness, young people. And here's the crazy thing. When you're in darkness, you stumble. And you don't even know what you stumbled on. You have no clue. I fell down, I don't know what I tripped over. I fell down again, I don't know what I tripped over. You become blind, you become ignorant to the things, the traps that the devil has set for you because you're walking in darkness. Let me tell you something, young people, the devil wants you. He would love to get you. He would love to defile your innocence. He would love to destroy your mind. He would love to corrupt you. And he would love to make it so that you could never serve God. And that's exactly what he wants to do. Thank your parents. For shielding you from that. And when you get tempted, or there's something to watch or see, you're, at a, you're somewhere, and there's something that the world is putting out there, some music video, some television show, you happen to see some, turn your head! Close your eyes and don't look at it! You say, oh, just one little glimpse ain't going to hurt nothing. You want to talk to Lot? Oh, I mean, all he did was just point his tent towards Sodom. I mean, it's just green pastures, right? But that glimpse... Changed his life forever. And it vexed his righteous soul with the conversation of the wicked. Young people, the devil hates you. He wants you in darkness. That was the first point. The second point is, just like that anglerfish has that little light to attract, the devil has some light. He has some shiny things for you. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel 
of light. You remember how I mentioned those that used to be in the right path and they left the right path? Well, they picked up some things when they were in this right path area. They picked up some things. They picked up some looks. They picked up some lingo. They picked up some ways that they could make you think they're still part of this group, but they're actually not part of this group. And they want you to believe that there's still some, some Christian, some Baptist, maybe even an independent fundamental Baptist, but you know what? They're not. They just look that way. They want you to believe that they're that way, but the Bible says that the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light, and his ministers, they look just like the apostles. I mean, which one of you, if you were in Jesus' day, would have suspected Judas? None of them did. You think you got a better rap on what's going on than they had? The very apostles of the Lamb? Nobody said, Judas, Judas. They're all like, Judas, Judas, Judas. No. You know what they said? Is it I? He was so good at deceiving, they didn't even suspect him. They suspected themselves before they suspected him. Matthew 17, 7, 15 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You say, how, how could you tell the difference between that sheep and that wolf that's wearing sheep's clothing? They both look like sheep. What's the difference? One says, bah, and one says, <laughs> It's the voice. What are they saying? If someone comes to you acting all spiritual and pious and they're just, oh, I'm so in love with God, listen. Listen to what they're saying. Because that growl is going to come out. Somewhere along the lines, you may look at them and say, man, that's some sheep. But that growl is going to come out. Those canines are going to show. At some point, you're going to see. And when you see it, young people, you need to run. Hopefully, no one on here has just unfettered access to the internet. And if you get on the internet and say you're just interested in watching YouTube videos of preaching, which, you know, that's great, yeah, if your parents let you, watch out who you listen to. Because there's, for every one good preacher on YouTube, there's 10,000 that are wolves. For every one preacher on YouTube who loves God and is trying to shoot it straight, there's 10,000 who want to deceive you and, and turn your heart away from God. No, not, not preachers. Preachers are trying to bring us toward God. No. No, unfortunately, there's more wolves than there are sheep. There's a lot more wolves than there are sheep. Jude 1.4 says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we've seen in, in churches there are wolves in sheep's clothing. But I want to also teach you about some other places, some other shiny bait that the devil is going to dangle in front of you to try and catch you. One, riches are a bait the devil will use. 1 Timothy 6, 9 says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. You know what? One of the biggest things the devil is going to use is riches, money, gold, silver, things. Why do you think that's one of the qualifications for a pastor? Not to go after the filthy lucre, not to be someone who's given to money. Because money will steal you from the work of God. So when you sit down, you're starting to get 14, 15, 16 years old, and you're thinking, what do I want to be when I grow up? What kind of life do I want to lead? What, what kind of a career path do I want to choose? You can sit down and say, hmm, I could go to college. I can go to a tech school. I can uh, just go do some on-the-job training. I can go be you know, an executive. I can be swinging a hammer. What, what are all the different things that I can do? Well, this one here, he makes 40000 a year. This one makes 60000 a year. This one makes 100000 a year. Is there anything wrong with looking ahead and trying to set goals? What did I leave out? Does anybody know what I left out? What do I want to be when I grow up? Serve God. What do I want to be when I grow up? A Christian. What do I want to be in church three times a week? What do I want to be when I grow up? Loving, serving God every single day. And whatever path he leads me on, no matter what money I make, I couldn't care less. My goal is to serve God. 
If I serve God making $20,000 a year, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. If I serve God and I make a million dollars a year, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But if your goal, man, I just got to make that money. I just got to make that money. You may make that money. You may make it. But it's going to steal you away from God if you will be rich. Listen to the verse. It says, they that will, their will, they want to be rich, fall into temptation and a snare. So if you, your goal is to be rich, it's a trap. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. How many rich people out there could you walk up to and say, hey, you got enough money? Oh, I got 50 billion in the bank, but man, I just need that other one more dollar. Just one more dollar I could squeeze in that bank account. And you know what? Then I'll be happy. And you know what they do? They squeeze another million in. And you know what they do? They go get high. They go get drunk. They go and they, they, they live in the gutters. They're buying prostitutes. They're living a filthy, disgusting, worthless life. And at the, night, at the, at the end of the night, all the drugs are done. All the alcohol has been drunk. All the, the, the wild women that they've had, you know what they're doing? They're sitting on the edge of their bed with a gun in their mouth contemplating, should I pull the trigger tonight or should I wait? That's what riches can do for you. I'm going to shoot it straight, young people. Is that what you want? Or do you want to say at the end of your night, you're on your knees beside your bed saying, Lord, I only made 50 bucks today, but praise God, it was honest, and you gave it to me, and help me to spend it wisely, and I'll tithe off of it. Which, which edge of the bed do you want to be on, young people? I'll tell you which one the devil wants you on. He wants you on the end of the bed with a barrel of a gun in your mouth. Whoa, that's pretty serious, Brother Greg. Yeah, it's serious. It's serious as a heart attack. And you know what the world's going to tell you? Man, go to college. Get that career. Ivy League school. You can be a lawyer. You could be a doctor. You could, you could be the, ma'am, you could be the president of the United States of America. And they're going to say, you'll be so happy. You'll have all the cars. You'll have the nice house. You know, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be on one of those television programs where you're walking around with a television crew and, and you're showing everybody, look, I got 17 bathrooms. Well, how many people live here? Just me. And I got 24 bedrooms. I got three swimming pools, one inside, two outside. And, and you're just all this stuff. And they just like, man, it just looks so good. And the devil's going to be shining that. He's going to shine the gold. He's going to shine the silver. He's going to shine all these wonderful Shiny little treats in front of your eyes. And you know what? You're going to look at it and you go, man, that does look good. And just like that little prey item, you're going to swim up closer and you're going to get closer. And it's going to get within your reach. And wham! The devil is going to destroy your life. Guarantee it. Next, the next bait the devil's going to use is Lust. Proverbs 6.24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content though thou givest many gifts. So the first bait that we saw was riches. This is the youthful lusts. And you know what? I think this one is even more powerful than the riches. Because men that have riches will give it up for the lust. The Bible here is telling men to stay away from the whorish woman. To keep your eyes not upon her, but fixed where they should be. And let me tell you something. There's been many a man who's been destroyed by a whorish woman. 
Look in your Bible. Just start out in the Bible and just start reading. How many great men of God had a huge setback in their life because they went after a whorish woman? What, what was it that, that destroyed Solomon's walk with God and caused him to go and sacrifice his children unto Molech? What caused him to hate his life? What caused him to turn away from the true and living God? It was the lust for women. What caused David to have the sword never leave his house? What caused him so much great despair and distress and heartache and even cost the life of his own child? But the lust of a whorish woman. You say, she wasn't a whorish woman. She was just taking a bath. He saw her. Hello? She consented. Doesn't say he forced her. Look, men, young men, the world is going to dangle all these pictures in front of your eyes. It, I, I, wish, I wish I could say there was a way not to see these things, but it's impossible to not see these things. There are billboards, there are magazines, there are just everywhere you look, the devil is putting this lust in front of your eyes, continually just feeding that lust. I mean, it's almost to the point now where you just got to wear a blindfold everywhere you go and walk by radar or something. But it's, it's true. This lust has destroyed many, many a men. And if you're a young man, keep your eyes focused on God. Make a covenant with your eyes that you may not think upon a maid. Because the devil, I'm telling you, has destroyed many a good godly men with this lust. And he wants your mind to be on those filthy thoughts. He wants them to be on those things that are not pleasing to God. And then the, the last bait we're going to look at is pride. The Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. You know, unfortunately, our society, the devil has set things up to where pride is now a virtue. Where you say, I'm proud of this, and I'm proud of that, and I'm full of pride, and proud, proud, proud. I'm proud of you, you're proud of me, we're all proud of each other. Let's just be full of pride. But pride is an abomination to God. God hates pride. What got Lucifer cast down to the earth but pride? Pride will lift us up, though we're nothing. And when pride lifts us up, God abases us, and you do not want God to have to abase you. Pride is, is, is a bait that really can get a hold of any one of us. This doesn't care if you're man, woman, boy, or girl. You know what? We all like to be right. We all like to have the last word. We all want to argue our point. But stay away from pride. Because pride in your heart will make you a wicked person. And it'll get you so far from God, and you won't even know it. You'll be so proud to be godly, even though you're not, that you won't even be able to see how much you stink. The last point about him that devil, that anglerfish in the darkness, he turns on that light to lure you in and he waits for the right time and then devours his victim. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That last part of the verse is so important because it says he seeks whom he may devour. That word may is a permission word. Like, may I go to the bathroom? May I have something to eat? May I step in line here? That's a word where you're asking for permission. See, the devil can't devour all of us. But he's looking for the one who he may devour. He's looking for the one that's getting close to those riches. He's looking for that one who's getting close to the lust of the flesh. He's looking for that one who's starting to get puffed up with pride. And he's just luring them in and luring them in. And that person is putting themselves in the position, just like that little prey item. No, no more common sense than to know, why is there this little light beaming in the middle of the ocean on the floor? Shouldn't be here, but I'll go towards it. You know, it's that same way with us. Young people, the devil's going to put those things. You want money? He's got money. You want women? He's got women. You want to look like you're the best and have all the pride in the world? He'll make you look like the best. He'll give you all of that stuff. And right when you're just about to have it, wham, you're devoured. Do not allow the devil to devour you. 
You say, well, what do we do? <laughs> the devil's there. He's got all these tools. He's got all these tricks. He wants to devour us. You know, even our own desires of our flesh are drawing us toward those things. How in the world can we get past this? How can we defeat this? Jesus is the way to escape. 1 John 3, 8 says this, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sitteth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Look, if you start seeing the world, the, the riches, the lusts, the pride, whatever it is, it's coming before your eyes and you feel it, it's luring into you, you know, one of the best ways to, to break that gaze onto that, whatever that item is, is this. I can't see any of the, the world's temptations. The devil is not tempting me. I got Jesus right in front of me. The Bible says in John 10, 10, B, the second part. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, God has given us all the tools. He's given us all the ways to identify every attack that the devil has for us. He's already told us about it. He's made it plain, wide open. I just read a ton of verses that warn us about all these different problems, all these different issues, all the ways that the devil's going to tempt you. He's going to lure you in. He's going to try and steal, kill, and destroy your life. All you have to do is read it, believe it, apply it, and understand it. And to some people, this message may seem a little extreme or a little out of place or maybe like, man, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad out there. Look, some people in this room have seen it. Some people in this room have seen the devil lure people in. Some people in this room have been lured in by the devil. Some people in this room still have those teeth marks from the devil chomping onto them. So you may think, never could happen to me. You're the one he's looking for. You think, oh, you know, I live in a great home. You're the one he's looking for. He's already got the ones out in the world. He's looking for you, young people. Jesus came that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look, all we have to do is walk in the light. If you're walking in darkness, that's where the anglerfish is. But if you walk in the light, you can see him. You can see him. He's, hi he's hiding in the cover of darkness. You can't see him there. Be children of the light. Have fellowship one with another. Have fellowship with God. Walk in the light. And he's not going to be able to get you. Look, young people, if you, if you don't read your Bible, if you're old enough to read and you don't read your Bible, read your Bible. If you're old enough to read your Bible, memorize your Bible. If you're old enough to memorize your Bible, start writing down verses that can help you with the struggles that you have in your life. I'm struggling with this. Find every verse in the Bible on that. Claim those verses. Memorize those verses. When that temptation comes, pull that verse out of your mind and say, I'm not going to do this sin because the Bible says this. That's walking in the light. And you know what? If you walk in the light, God can deliver you out of the hands of wicked men. My prayer is is not one young person in this church falls for that bait and gets taken by the devil. My prayer is that each and every one sitting here today in 10, 15, 20 years is still going to be a servant God. And even some of you old people out there, I want you to keep serving God too. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for making it so plain and so clear, Lord. We know we have an enemy and, and we know that we're, we're shielded from the things of this world. And sometimes we can get this idea that, that there is no devil out there because we're just so shielded. And thank, thank you so much that we shield our children from the things of this world. But Lord, as we get older and we, we get more freedoms, we're going to see and hear and uh, just be exposed to so many things. Lord, help us to, to keep your word ever before our hearts and minds. Help us not to give in to the, any of the lusts of the flesh that we looked at, any of the baits that the devil is dropping down to try and catch us. Father, help us, each and every one of us, to serve you with our whole life. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
right, if you could please stand and grab your songbooks and turn to song number 449. Song number 449, we're going to sing Dwelling in Beulah Land. Song number 449.